Hey guys, how are you doing? In this video, I would be answering a few common queries related to proof of funds for Express Entry of Canada. So if you're interested in applying Canadian PR, please do watch this video until the end because there's a lot of information that can be useful for you. Hello everybody, this is Shitanju from Dream Abroad. If you want to immigrate to Canada or Australia without paying hefty fee to the consultants, please visit my channel. I've got so many videos on the immigration process of both of these countries. I do upload videos almost every day now, so if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe it right now. Okay, so let me also tell you about this Dream Abroad Canada Facebook page. This is not a promotion page. This is a discussion group where people actually come to find answers to their queries. We are a family of more than 5,000 people now. So if you do have queries on the Canadian immigration process, please come over to this page and find answers to it. Also, if you do know some of the details, please do reply to queries of other people and help the community grow. I'll provide the link to this Facebook group in the description box below. Okay, so before I start this video, let me quickly tell you about two other videos on proof of funds that I uploaded around four months ago. The first video is on the basics of proof of funds. How much money do you actually need in your account? Why is it required? Which all things can be used as proof of funds like mutual funds, provident fund, property valuation, jewelry valuation. Can these be used for proof of funds or not? Everything in the first video. The second video is about the gift deed where you can get to know how you can actually get money from your parents or relatives and as a gift and then show it as proof of funds. Please do check out these videos. The links are in the description box below. Okay, so now let's begin this video, which is about the common queries. I've listed all these common queries firstly and then I'll be answering all of them one by one. So the first query is, do you need to maintain the minimum amount from six months before the application submission? After submitting application, do you need to add more money to cater the increasing foreign exchange prices? Do you need to hold money for six months in your account in case of a gift deed? Can you open a Canadian bank account and transfer money to that account before leaving for Canada? Can home loans, car loans, personal loans, etc. create a problem for proof of funds? Can you show money in your spouse's account? Can you show money in a joint account with someone who is not a part of your PR application? Do you need to show the money at the time of immigration? If yes, then how? So I'll be answering all of these questions one by one. So the first one. Do you need to maintain the minimum amount from six months before the application submission? We all know that we have to submit the bank statement of six months along with the bank letter. But this does not mean that you should have that minimum amount from the starting. But you need to have the minimum amount at the time of getting the bank letter. So let's suppose you do have $1,000 less or $2,000 less, but you're adding every month through your salary. That is totally fine. Let's suppose you actually have that money in your account, but you don't want to keep it. You don't want to lose the interest that you can actually earn in the meanwhile. So you can actually invest it in mutual funds or stocks or wherever you want to, but you should actually mention it in the letter of explanation. You should definitely liquidate that amount before the submission of your application and then get the bank letter for proof of funds. You should attach the necessary receipts of transaction proofs as well. Please don't miss them out because in that case, you know, it will your application may might become doubtful and it might cause a rejection. Okay, now after submitting application, do you need to add more money to cater the increase in foreign exchange prices? We all know the situation right now. Money is doing really bad in the foreign exchange market and US dollar, Canadian dollar are doing really good. But 
The good news is that if you have submitted the application, you need not worry about it. IRCC considers the foreign exchange rate on the date of application submission. So let's say that you actually had, you know, you submitted your application on 15th of September that day, the, the rate of exchange was 55 rupees, Indian rupees for one Canadian dollar. In that case, and in future it does, you know, goes up to 57 also. So you need not worry about it. It should be, you, for you the price would be calculated, the, or rather the uh, funds would be calculated according to rupees 55 for one Canadian dollar only. Okay, next question. Do you need to hold money for six months in your account in case of a gift deed? No, you can leave it, uh, sorry, you can have it even two days before the submission of your PR application. So there's no need to have it for a longer period of time. You can just have it before uh, the before the submission of your application, but you should have the necessary documents for gift deed. Okay, can you open a Canadian bank account and transfer money to that account before leaving for Canada? Yes, you can definitely do that. Scotia Bank actually offers a Star Trade program. It does offer a, uh, the facility to open a bank account being in your home country and you can transfer the money into the Canadian bank account. Okay, can car loans, home loans, personal loans create a problem for proof of funds? No, please don't worry about it. Officials are not concerned about your financial status, liabilities or your net worth. They are only concerned that do you have the necessary amount of money in your account and or if you have actually borrowed it from someone or not. Those are the two points that they're actually concerned about. Okay, can you show money in your spouse's account? So there can be two cases over here. If your spouse is accompanying you, in that case, you can use money in your joint account. Definitely, no issues. You can use money in account which is in his or her name, which means the spouse's name, but you must prove that you have access to it. Okay, if your spouse is not accompanying you, what should you do in that case? To use money in joint account, you need to prove that you have access to that account. Also, to use money in his or her account, you must, you might need a gift deed. Okay, so you might need a gift deed or even a letter might work, but uh, please try avoiding it. You should have money in your own bank account. Can you show money in a joint account with someone who is not a part of your PR application? So yes, you can do it after proving that you have legal access to that money. But try avoiding the situation because it is quite a tricky one. I didn't believe earlier that this was possible but you know somebody actually commented in one of my videos that he or she got his PR application approved doing that. But still, I would suggest you try and avoid that, to try and avoid every complication. Just keep your application as simple as possible. Get a gift deed from them. That is much simpler than getting, you know, doing the first point. Okay, do you need to show the money at the time of immigration? If yes, then how? So when we land in Canada at the time of immigration at the airport, the Immigration officer might ask you about the proof of funds. How are you going to settle in Canada? He might ask you these questions. There's, there's a little chance that they will ask it, but they might ask. So you need not carry too much cash. You can show the money in your home country's bank account or Canadian bank account. You can just carry, you know, maybe $100 with you and show that, you know, I can, if I need, I'll actually transfer the money back from my home country to the uh, Canadian bank account and you know wh whatever your plan is. They're totally flexible to it but you should definitely have that amount of money, you should have legal access to that amount of money. So guys I just hope that uh, these queries over here were was helpful to you. I tried to accumulate all those queries which people ask me in the uh, comment section, you know people ask me personally. So all these queries have been listed over here. 
please do comment in the comment section if you do have some other queries related to proof of funds I would be happy to help you so thank you for watching this video please do like this video if you think it was useful for you please share it with your friends if you think it will be useful for them and also please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet thanks again